Although Gran Turismo, much like Forza, has had the idea of categorizing vehicles pretty much for the entire run, it started off with horsepower levels, then later on, more so around GT5 and 6, you saw stuff like the point level integration, which of course Forza uses as well with PI, and then in GT Sport it really came into its own for the first time with actual proper classes, Group 3, Group 1, Group B for Rally, of course the notorious Group X, and then in GT7 that's been further refined, and one of the most notable improvements, improvements in terms of making the game more fair, at least, is restructuring in particular the road car side of things, because of course in GT Sport we had the N classes, which were fantastic in terms of earning way too much money, because you could get a vehicle with way less power that was far quicker than you would think it would be, especially around an oval track, but then of course you can't really do that so much anymore. You can of course finagle some vehicles into a slightly lower point category than you could argue it should be allowed into, but even that tends to get adjusted here and there. It's still a source of contention though, because certain vehicles do feel like they get dumped into classes, and so and classes themselves as a concept feel like something of a dumping ground by design almost. Group X was probably the most egregious in GT Sport, but even in 7 you can tell that they've still got those teething problems, they're trying to improve it, but it got me to thinking, how would I improve something like that? How would I restructure those classes? And how would you folks do that? So on that point, I would love to hear whether or not you agree with my idea here for restructuring it, but also what kind of structure would you have? One of the key things I wanted to keep in mind here was it needed to be understandable and also not overly complex. It needed to make sense but not be so ridiculous in terms of how many subcategories and modern and custom and historic and aftermarket and all of this nonsense that Forza itself can sometimes get into. For example, if you look in Horizon 5, there are so many subcategories categories of vehicle, and even though it works better than it easily could, especially for Gran Turismo and Polyphony who have clearly had teething problems here, they could very easily get stuck in the weeds. So my main ideas are more so actually for the motorsport classes rather than the road car stuff. Because to touch on that point first, I do not believe there should be any difference in classic, modern, concept, whatever, road vehicles. Aftermarket tuner cars as well, I think they should all be kept as is, as quote-unquote road cars, or in other words have no category just given a point level. I think a point level is always going to be better than a power level because like I said in GT Sport that's just far too easy to game the system whereas with a point level it factors in more things than that. Ironically though the way that Gran Turismo actually used to factor in points especially in GT5 was more efficient and more accurate than it is now and from a certain sense it was more realistic as well because back in GT5 and I seem to recall in 6 also everything you did to the car changed the point level even settings changes. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, power levels. I'm talking like suspension changes, diff changes, it all changed the car. And I would argue that's exactly how it should be. It makes things very, very in depth. But on the one hand, Kaz has always wanted that from Gran Turismo, so you can't say that out of one side of your mouth and then not want that in-depth complexity on the other side. So I think that that should affect it, and that's probably the major change I would make there. Bringing in stuff like suspension changes, factoring those things into the model that the game spits out the points from to make it more accurate. It is rife for glitching or quote-unquote cheating the system, but again, you can factor in those things. You can get a lot of that out before the game is released with, you know, test crews, beta versions of the game, and even once the game is out with especially the structure now of updates, you can continue to change it. More recently in GT7, we've just seen a massive overhaul, for example. To move into the motorsport side of things, that's really where I want to see the changes happen, because for one thing, you've got older and newer vehicles dumped into the same classes for really no good reason. And sometimes it's not just a case of technology moving forward and leaving cars behind, they just should not be in those same classes. It reminds me actually of how in the older games you used to see stuff like a Lister Storm and a Panos up against a Pescarolo and a Sauber C9 and even a Formula Gran Turismo thrown in there for good measure, and as cool as it was to see all that wild stuff with a Gillet Vertigo in there for good measure as well with 900 horsepower inexplicably, it just doesn't make any sense. And if you're trying to make the game more realistic, you should treat the cars accordingly. And for me, that's where the motorsport side of the categorizations comes in. First of all, let's talk Rally. Rally itself is often overlooked in the game, but I think there should be at least two classes. And this is another thing which made me want to make this video because recently I mentioned I think there should be a Group S, 
at the very least in addition to Group B, because simply put, a Suzuki Escudo, of all things, being a prime example, should not be a point-only vehicle. That is utterly insane. That makes no sense whatsoever. It's a ridiculously OP idea to even allow that into quote-unquote road car events, admittedly ones which don't require a, you know, a point restriction, but even so, it should be in a Group S rally. Group S should be for extreme rally cars, Pikes Peak cars, I would actually argue it should be on and off-road rally. And the reason why I say that stipulation is because, for example, the Volkswagen IDR is a Pikes Peak car, but it never went on the dirt because Pikes Peak doesn't have any dirt anymore. So I believe that should also be in there as well. Where things potentially get more interesting is I think you could even make an argument for having a subcategory of a Group A for stuff like the older 90s WRC cars. Group A could be the more historic side of rally. Then Group B could be the more traditional fictional stuff, you know, like your Mustangs and NSX rally cars and all the stuff that we already have, and then Group S for the higher tier stuff that doesn't make any sense to be in lower classes. Your Tajima E-Runner, your Volkswagen IDR, your Suzuki Escudo, any others with that crazy kind of level, but here's the key, they're crazy straight out of the crate, not cars which are tuned up to 800 horsepower. There's the difference I would stipulate there. And to me, the Group A is kind of an optional thing. It's not as important as Group S, but that's the thing I would do for Rally. Then as far as Group 4, Group 3, Group 2, and Group 1, my idea is pretty much the same for every one. And the only major change I would make here is I would have a secondary class, a subclass if you will, which I would call slash H. So GT4 or Group 4 H, Group 3 H, Group 2 and Group 1 H. And the H of course would be historic. So in other words, Group 1 would be stuff like current hypercars or LMP1s. Even then, you could make an argument for having different classes again, but I'm trying not to make it too complex. The delineation, I would say, should be if you go back to like LMP900 or maybe to GT1 in the 90s, make that Group 1 H. So the older stuff, GT1s, Group C cars, I think you get the idea. At least having some kind of demarcation point around maybe the mid-2000s region, where everything before that needs to be in that subclass. You don't have to call it historic, but something to that effect. To make it clear, that's kind of where the pivot point is and it's funny because in real life you can kind of see that change if you look at the cars in Gran Turismo how they perform compare for example a McLaren F1 GTR to something like and I'm talking about the group 3 short tail GTR there compare that to like a you know GT by Citroen race car or whatever else well it can kind of compete but only when balance of performance is swinging in, in like a fair favor if you put the cars head to head on their own terms it's not going to stand a chance so why have balance of performance making things so ridiculous just allow the McLaren to have its time, give it the respect it deserves, and put it in its own historic class. And that's basically what I would do all the way down the board. For 4, 3, 2, and 1, Group 2 is one of the biggest ridiculous dumping grounds in the game as well, because you've got such a wild disparity. You've literally got some, like, GT1 style machines in there, such as the Toyota GT1, the CLK LM, the McLaren F1, but then you've also got, like, an NSX GT500 car, or, uh, you know, GTR GT500. That, that's just weird. It makes no sense. That is a time where I could see a decent argument for having a separate, for example, DTM category, or a separate GT500 category. Maybe even a separate GT300, were they to have those cars coming back. Again, you can easily get into the weeds there, but I think in those upper echelons of racing in particular, say for example Group 2 and Group 1, those real top tier stuff, that I think is where you could get more technical if you wanted to. So having a GT1 class, having an LMP900 class, having a DTM as I said, etc. To me that makes more sense at that level. Whereas down in Group 4, I don't think it matters quite as much. You could kind of just have Group 4 and then Group 4 Historic for stuff like, you know, older DTM cars, for example, like the Alpha 155 or whatever else, if you really wanted to. If you were to bring in a DTM class, just make it DTM slash Historic. So the same idea could still apply. Where things get interesting again, and this one might sound uh, controversial, is I actually would bring back Group X. But here's the twist. I believe Group X is essential in Gran Turismo because there are certain cars which make no sense to be anywhere else. But I don't mean they're vehicles that you can't use. They are very useful, and that's the problem. They're vehicles which should not be as useful as they are. They should have their own category, their own style of racing, and the difference in the way I would have that implemented into the game versus how it was implemented in GT Sport is that in Sport it was just utter nonsense. It was a ridiculous class. What 
I would do in Group X is the Forza approach. They used to call it U-Class with 999 points, which was the highest in the game. They later changed it to the X-Class. X-Class would be for stuff like prototype cars that were fully tuned, de-restricted to like 900 horsepower, cars which were way too quick to compete fairly with other Group 1s, or in the form of Forza, like R1-class stuff. What I think Group X should be for is specifically vehicles which are not allowed to race, but are most certainly not road cars either. So stuff like a Ferrari FXXK, a Pagani Zonda R, a McLaren P1 GTR, that tier of machine should under no circumstances, in my opinion, be allowed to compete in point level events against road cars. It just doesn't make sense any more so than the Suzuki Escudo does. At the same time, they are not race cars. They specifically do not adhere to the rules, so you shouldn't be allowed to race them against other racing machines. You could have specific Group X events, and to me, an extreme class, which is what that would be, makes sense because these are extreme cars. They're track-only, non-race cars, but they certainly aren't road cars either. And if you really wanted to push it, you can include cars from different eras within that. So yes, something like an FXXK should be quicker than an FXX, but I don't think many people would care too much if both of those were in a Group X racing against each other, because it's that kind of car. Likewise with a Zonda R, a Maserati MC12 Corsa, for example, which is not race spec. You could even put something like a Porsche 919 Evo into that class if it were in the game, the version that Porsche beat numerous lap records with. In other words, I don't know if they would ever add that kind of car, but that thing being in there would make more sense than it being anywhere else. That's my overall thoughts on how I would try at least to restructure Gran Turismo's classes. I think the point level, for the most part, works pretty well. There aren't too many broken cars in the game, and certainly when you come up against other real players, well, the skill factor tends to cancel out a lot of that stuff, because any unusually OP car, the community will weed it out and all start using it pretty quick. It's the racing classes which to me just don't make enough sense, especially the higher you go. Do you maybe think there could be different classes? Are you, for example, the kind of person who would rather go super technical? Would you have like a an electric class and other things as well? That's it for my thoughts. Of course, drop yours down below and stick around for more GT7 content in future. But for now, thanks for watching.